Welcome back to another episode of the Bogeyman Golf Podcast. In this episode, I'm joined by one of Ireland's great amateur talents, Hugh Foley. Hugh spoke about some of his career highlights from winning the North and South back-to-back, as well as some of his close calls, including finishing second to Matt McLean at the US Mid-Am. Hugh spoke very honestly about his struggles on and off course over the past year or so, and why he's confident 2024 will be a big year. This series is supported by AIG, dedicated supporters of amateur golf in Ireland. This series will showcase some of the incredible amateur golf across Ireland this year. Go visit AIG.ie for a range of exclusive golf discounts and benefits on their products. Golf Ireland members can save an additional 10% on their car insurance and you can enjoy some exclusive benefits when you choose AIG insurance, no matter what level of golfer you are. I would tend to be very honest about my game. I probably tend to be too honest. I actually want to know what Matt McLean's secret is, because I think it's pints or something. I remember going home, like leaving the course straight away. I was disgusted and pretty close to tears. That's a good question. Who took my cheese? Then went on like probably two months of like the best golf I've ever played. I need to need to get better to make a living playing golf. My dad was just like a massive sports lover, fanatic, golf fanatic. What motivates me is just getting to realize how good I can be. And I don't know what that is yet. So Hugh, you're uh, just back from, from Spain. How uh, have the last few weeks been for you? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, cheers. Um, last few weeks have been a little bit more positive, a little bit better for me. Um, I have been working pretty hard and uh, yeah, starting to see a bit of that coming to fruition now. And, and uh, yeah, struggled for, for a little bit of time there and um, maybe had a bit of a hangover from last year and stuff. And uh, yeah. Um, feel like it's just starting to come back up hopefully um, can ride a bit of a wave now and, and, and work on that so yeah plenty of positives so you alluded to it there a um, little bit of a hang up from last year 2023 not not the year you were looking for really no um, definitely a bit of a yeah a lot of disappointment and um, you kind of analyse it and stuff of what went wrong um, but um, you know the 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 bad part of sport is that it's gone. You know, you're analyzing it um, to try and get better, but you know, the moment's gone. Um, it was a weird year because I had a couple of results that were my, my best ever in big events. Um, so when you look at the big events in Europe that we play, it's European Am, British Am, St. Andrews, and probably Lytham. Mm. And in two of those, I was fourth. Um, so, um, you know, one of them I was 18 under for four rounds and like really good golf but then miscut in the other two. So really inconsistent. And um, yeah, just trying to piece together why that was and um, and what went wrong so that I can, you know, get better and keep pushing and keep motivated rather than yeah, get too down on it. And um, yeah, it's like golf's tough. I suppose sport is tough. That's just uh, the way it goes. You have to really fight through the lows and stuff. But yeah. Um, yeah, weird one because it wasn't like a crap year. No, um, it was like uh, it was just um, didn't quite go the way I hoped it would. It was almost like the results, the good results that came, a couple of them were nearly at the wrong time mm. of the year for you. Mm. Obviously, just when it came to like, we're obviously talking about like Walker Cup selections and like team selections from that perspective. It's almost like some of those results came either a little too early in the season yeah. or a little too late. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'm playing good golf here. I know I am. It yeah. also just shows like the margins that you're talking about are like for for my money you're you're one of the best amateur golfers in Ireland around at the moment. So when you're talking about like the, like you know not making a team or just missing out in team, like the margins are are tiny at that level. Like that must be very frustrating. Yeah, um, it definitely is. Yeah, because uh, people talk about um, for teams anyway. You know they're picking teams all year or even for eighteen months out. So. Um, end of 2022 you get to a point um, yeah. where you know guys are saying well you're you know you're on this team or you're on that team and um, then you get to uh, yeah you just keep progressing but like it really doesn't matter until the until the team is, is being played within a couple of weeks you need to play well at the right time so yeah for me um, missed out on a couple of selections with Ireland um, and played well in between and then missed a the six man team but um, I think the team for that was selected during the European Am, which was the, you know, so it was just a little too late and then Lytham was too early. And, um, but at the, at the end of the day, like, you know, I went to the Western Am, the US Am, and it was in my hands to, to go and play well there. Um, 
but um, I didn't really uh, get it done. So at the end of the day, it's it's down to how you play, and um, just didn't quite get it done. Yeah, um, you try and find little pockets of. It's the same for anyone at any level. It's the same for me when I was growing up. I'd have pockets of you have three or four weeks where you just can't do anything wrong, and you're not thinking about it, and um, puts are going in. You don't know why, and um, that happened to to me at the end of June. European Am then went to the British Open qualifier and, and had 10 birdies and an eagle and missed by one. And then all of a sudden, because I wasn't on the six-man team, I had nothing to play in for two and a half weeks up until the Western Am. And felt, by the time I got to Western Am, like it was almost like that was gone. I was a bit, yeah. a bit deflated. But um, yeah, that's it. You have to pick yourself back up and find ways to, to play well. And when you're not, when you don't have that run of form, and that's probably it. My bad golf just not quite good enough at the moment so yeah that's I guess what I'm working on now it's interesting you talk about going once you play in the US the mid-arm and, and the western arm you you're pretty much a full-time amateur now for for this season you're yeah. playing in and have for the last what 2023 and 22 in amateur events that not every other all of your contemporaries are also going to play in yourself and Matt McLean went over played the mid-arm went over again then last year does that kind of start, like obviously it's great to play in different tournaments and tournaments that other guys aren't playing in. Does it stand almost against you or to hurt you a little bit to go off and play in those tournaments or is that a case of like, listen, you want to do it and you want to play in these tournaments, you want to play against the best in the world, not just the best in Ireland yeah. and Europe? I think, uh, it depends on the event, but I think it can, I think it stands to you. Like if you look at, so Matt last year, probably say himself, you know, he's, he's playing the majors, uh, he had to miss some of the big ones, British Am, St. Andrews. Um, and I guess it was hard for him to get it quite right. And he found his pocket of form then coming into that, played the Western Am, got to the semifinals, which was really brilliant golf. Um, and that's where I can stand to you. So no one else is playing that. You know, you had Calm Scott, myself, Matt, um, possibly Barkley Brown, I can't remember. But mm. um, so that kind of kind of helped you. You're playing one of the best events in the world, the Western Am. And the USM, he went and made the cut in the USM. And so we straight, you know, he's um, then guaranteed. On the, he's vindicated that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I feel like had I had I done the exact same as him, I would have been on that team as well. Um, so, no, I think it can help. You want to play the best events in the world. And, um, yeah, the way I look at it is I want to travel and see the world. And very lucky to, to do that as an amateur. So, yeah. Um, it kind of works in steps, I suppose, of like, you know, you're playing all the Irish stuff and then um, I was lucky I did well in that. So you get a bit of profile and then you get a bit of sponsorship and now you can afford. Uh, and then we played the, play the mid-am and then that opened up just um, loads of doors for 2023 of getting invites. Um, we were getting emails all the time to play in America and play in big events and they want to host you. And um, that was super, yeah. So playing the US Am was, was very cool. I wasn't sure would I ever do that because mm. it's very difficult to to get into that you usually have to be in the top 50 in the world uh, as an amateur so yeah i never thought i actually would get into that so um yeah i think it was worth worth going worth the experience and it's cool to see the you know the best players in the world then so you're saying that obviously you want to go travel the world and you want to play all over the world against the best in the world like as i mentioned you're just back from spain before that australia how's the golf at the moment yeah it's it's good it's it's more positive so um yeah i think from august struggled a little bit i went to the mid-am and and made the cut but got knocked out q school i was i was i was doing well uh, and stuff just wasn't really sure. firing and, and and didn't get through so um yeah i'd say i struggled i struggled in australia um and i think i really technically struggled without realizing what i was doing couldn't figure it out and um then that turns into pretty like you know goes straight to your mind then and uh it, it can be quite tough so i learned a lot i would say in australia um yeah i missed three cuts and played some some mixture of golf uh and but came kind of felt i learned a lot mentally because i couldn't fix what was going on technically i've you know um, had a big shift in, in mindset and then um, came back, was with my coach and we figured out what was going wrong technically. And then, so now I feel like I'm on the way back up, um, having gone through that mental struggle and now hopefully fixing the technique and we'll have, uh, 
hopefully that can come together now nicely for the season. I was, I was going well in Spain, first round, and, and had a bit of a slip up on the last, and then going well again towards the end and had another bit of a, a slip up towards the end. But uh, overall, it's getting better. You mentioned there kind of working on your the mentality and the like, like building your strength up on that. You also studied psychology in college, so is that a big focus for you or is that somewhere that you have a keen interest in kind of the sports psych uh i just have a keen interest in it yeah yeah i didn't um i didn't actually study it um i didn't actually go to college oh, okay. uh, yeah yeah i went there to school i would have been mad interested into it and that's what i would have done um had i gone to, to sure. college but i felt i was just going to give everything to uh to to one thing so that was golf but yeah i just have a real keen interest in psychology and sports psychology sure. but um even psychology in general yeah mm. um so just reading plenty of books and listening to lots of podcasts and yeah, just trying to pick up what I can and yeah. What are you reading? Well, my, I just finished the Michael Phelps book. Um, so that's more of a, you know, it's a biography, but yeah. uh, there's lots of nuggets from him there. Like he chapters the books into mental okay. aspects and, and, and parts of the ad. So he has like eight chapters and you know, they're like determination, willpower, ambition, blah, blah, blah. So uh amazing yeah uh that was pretty cool and then um i was given this book um by a uh sports psychologist um who took my cheese uh, okay. <laughs> and it's a funny one it's a really, it's a short one you can read it in like an hour hour and a half and it's about kind of perspective um so that was a decent one um it's about follows mice and uh cheese uh, it's really simple it has pictures and everything but it's really good very nice um I guess when you're when you're looking back at kind of this year and, and and looking at the psychology side of it, do you ever look back at kind of the, that form you were in for twenty twenty two? But even going back before that, like obviously you won like the the close in twenty twenty. Do you try and look back at those times and just take confidence from them and try and build on them, or is it a case of that's past, that's done? Now I'm looking at kind of building beyond that, or what's the kind of the focus? Yeah, it's funny. I was talking about that last night on the range. Um, because I can be, I, I, I would tend to be very honest about my game. So if someone asks me, um, I probably tend to be too honest. There's probably a psych psychological training of, you know, uh, fake it till you make it. Um, sure. So when someone asks me about my game, I probably should say, brilliant. It's really good. I'm playing amazing. I'm putting amazing. Couldn't be better. But uh, I do, I would be very like harsh on my own analysis of my game. So I tend to just be honest and, uh, so I was I was kind of saying that to the this guy last night in the range and um and then he was saying well sure look you've won this and that and uh, it's funny like they, that confidence of 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 playing well in those events it does feel like it's like past it's it's gone you can't really like it's not really a feeling you can just concoct by you know remembering it you can a little bit but it's not really it doesn't stand to you for long enough on the course I think it's just kind of like a fake short feeling of confidence but the real confidence comes from um i think just putting in putting in the effort and slowly getting sharp again and slowly um seeing it mm. in uh in your results so i feel more confident now after spain but during the spanish am i wasn't you know if i was as in as good a form as i was in 2022 i think i would have really pushed for like a, a top result but there's times when you're just, yeah, you're not aiming quite as confidently as you, you're like, you know, you're still aiming for that bad shot that you have just in case, or, um, yeah, you, you start to think about the cut line. If you make a few bogeys, things that just don't go through your mind when you're on a rich vein of form. So, um, yeah, I think I need a bit of looking back on those times and, and how I was, I definitely try and, uh, try and act like I am, um, in a rich vein of form and, and how I did in 2022 and look back and think, what was I like then? But, um, yeah, just trying to work on, on getting back to that confident level. All right. Cause you were, you were very young or yeah, you were very young when you got your first win, like the idea close back in 2020. Oh, you know, you're still young. You're Before still I was a mid am yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, like that was, that was four years ago and you've had a number of wins very consistently ever since then getting your first national title for senior title from a championship. What was that feeling like? Obviously it's a lot of indication when you're, you've been working so hard, but again, like it, it must be positive signs where you're mm. like, right, I'm, I'm, I'm this young. I can go mm. on and I can, I can win a lot here. Yeah. That's, um, 
that's basically it. I think back then it was, um, for me, I was four handicap when I was 18. So then, or 19. So four years later, I won the Irish close by 10 was a bit, um, <laughs> hit by 10. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. <laughs> Trying to get my confidence back up. Um, yeah, it was that, that's, uh, kind of like disbelief at the time. You don't think you're ever going to do that. I hadn't played for Ireland or I had played for Ireland, but I wasn't on the squad. Yeah. Um, so you don't think you're ever going to do that. Cause you and were then, what? Nine, nearly 20. We just turned 20. No, for the, for the, for the close, I was 22 or three. Okay. Possibly 20. I can't remember. It's October, 2020 anyway. Um, so I just, I just never thought I was going to do that. And then, and then you do it and you do it by that much. And, yeah, now I'm like, okay, I can do that again. And that's, I guess, what happened. And then I guess the key is to try and take that overseas and to keep progressing um, at who you do it against. Because that golf, the golf was good enough for those three days to beat, probably be a, a more international field. But it's having that belief in the international event yeah. that you can just play your own game. Um, so... Yeah, you got the, you get that belief in your game, and you can see how good you can be, and then you just keep keep working on that and try to try to um, do it again. And so, did you get how long was it before you got to then test that game internationally after after winning the close? You said like mm. you won by ten. You were obviously kind of on on men's squads, or you were coming on coming into men's squads, mm. international squads. Then at that point, yeah, what was your first taste of international experience and being able to gauge your game? at that level um yeah so well before that i had i had played like scottish ams and things and um i don't remember i think the following was it the following year we did the battle golf 2021 it's just after you won the west oh okay so that was 2022 I, I, you. I, asked <laughs> for your, I, I asked for your trophy someone, yeah. someone received that trophy <laughs> um so then 2021 i would have played um, I think I think 2022 was the first time I really like I came third in the Scottish Am I got to the quarters of the Spanish Am um, I was making cuts consistently enough and probably 2022 before I really I don't really remember 2021 to be honest uh, there's still COVID and stuff wasn't there so yeah. um, I feel like we only got seven events that springs to mind we only got seven events wow. in 2021 I don't know why wow. Um uh so yeah covid kind of stopped that actually um maybe yeah taking taking that kind of confidence into playing international stuff probably okay. yeah because we didn't uh, like there was no south africa trip or australia trip or yeah any of that obviously with covid so um 2022 2023 before i really started to do well in some of these more international ones and was especially when 2022 came along like like i said you were just the man to beat that year um, yourself and uh, Matt McLean obviously went ahead a number of times but was there something that that you put into place over 2020 2021 that started to click for you for 2022 or was it just a case of you were just getting reps under your belt everything mm. was more comfortable and you were trusting the game yeah I think it's I think it's everything I, I, yeah I never think there's like a secret to um Sometimes you see, like, I, I actually want to know what Matt McLean's secret is because he went from, <laughs> he went from like not making one of the teams, the octagonal team, I think. Now he might have been injured or unavailable, so he can correct me. But he went from there to being like number one in Ireland, ranked player, playing mm. the majors and like coming in the top five all the time. So I want to know what his secret is. I think it's pints or something. You get some sort of <laughs> magic from pints that I don't, I don't get. It, but um, uh, I think. <laughs> No, I, I don't want to take anything away from him. He's, uh, I think the same as him, kind of, you get more mature, your golf age matures, you get more experience. Yeah. Um, so there's no real quick f solution on that unless you're a bit of a superstar, like Rory McIlroy, maybe if Sean Keelan can be like that. Um, but I think for the rest of us mortals, it's uh, COVID. I did a lot of reading. I read like must have been 10 or more psychology books and i was studying them like i was writing them down and like seeing what i could remember so there i'd say a lot of that stuck to me did lots okay. of short game practice you know went to the beach hit lots of balls on the beach and um i think it just all comes together but you need experience and you need to just put in the put in the reps and then eventually it it starts to starts to work so 2022 um 
had its lows as well. So, um, but yeah, it kind of came a bit together. All right. Yeah, because I guess on, on course, like winning in the north and then what the week later going down, mm. winning the south, creating a bit of history. I think you're all, it's just yourself and Darren Clark that have done it in the same year. Going into that week, where, where's your mind frame at? Um, well, like before the north, and I, th- I think I've said it before, like uh, I I thought I was in a low uh, um, spot with my golf. I had had done well. Scottish Am was third, and had Spanish Am had good start to the year, um, and then went and missed a cut in. Um, maybe I made the cut in St Andrews, but I missed the cut in the British Am, and then I was like twentieth in the European Am and shot an eighty-one in the third round, missed the cut, and I probably had a chance of making the St Andrews team. I didn't really realize. Mm. I didn't have much knowledge about that sort of thing but I was probably close to that team and then those two miscuts got me off that and I was fairly fairly down about that I went to the six man team I got I got picked for that um before I shot that 81 in the European app so I got on that team and uh played pretty poorly then and wasn't wasn't picked for for two of the matches one day I had to sit out and caddy so I felt I was feeling pretty low um confidence was pretty low wasn't really hit. I didn't really know where the ball was going, and then went to the north and shot three over on the valley course, which is supposed to be the easy course. Um, I remember lads were shooting five and six under, uh, and I remember going home, uh, like leaving the course straight away. I was disgusted and pretty upset, um, pretty like pretty close to tears, uh, I would say. And I remember yeah, ringing my coach and. Uh, he was like, just send me a video of your swing. And I did. And he was like, that's fine. Like, what's what's your problem? And he was like, just go out and play. So the next day I was like, right, I'm playing Port Rush. It's a hard course. I'm just going to aim wherever. I'm going to hit it. And where, whatever happens, happens. And I went out and played great. And then did it again and again. And all of a sudden won. And then then went on like probably two months of like the best golf I've ever played. Um, so it's bizarre. I think I... Yeah, to, like you can get to such a low point where like there's almost nowhere else to go that you just start climbing back up again. Yeah. Um, so getting not left off of that team and then obviously again with like Walker Cup then this year, does does that motivate you? Do you like are you, do you hold a grudge? Because no. there's been a, a <laughs> couple. Of, I mean, after a couple of teams, you're probably like, what the hell do I have to do? Here? <laughs> um, no, I think I think it was fair enough. St. Andrews team, that was fair enough. Um, had I been picked for that St. Andrews team, I m- may not have played the North. Uh, I know Matt McLean did. I know a couple of lads sat it out just to be fresh. So uh, I might have missed the North and the South, so I might never have won it. So I remember looking back on that thing and like, happy days, you know. Um, you know, it just depends on what you, what you, how you look at it, perspective, you know, who took my cheese? That's <laughs> who took my cheese? <laughs> who took my cheese, you know? Um... That's basically what that book's about, you know. It's like, do you look at it like who took my cheese? This is unfair, or just go find cheese somewhere else. So I, I went and found cheese somewhere else in the north and south, and then they close. And um, no, the Walker Cup was was fair enough. I I wasn't in I wasn't in the top ten. I, by the time I came around, I wasn't uh, wasn't there. So that was that was fine. Um, different times of the year. Um, I I probably would have been, but. No, that was that was fair. Absolutely, don't hold any any grudge. I wish I was just playing well. I feel like I could have added to the team. I think sure. you have to think that. Like I, yeah. I feel like how I played in the European Am at like twenty four or five birdies for four days. Then like that's great for match play golf. So I was putting great and stuff. I feel like I could have added to the team, but no, um, no, it's fair. I think there have been other occasions that I have talked about as well. The for maybe um, closer to home teams that uh, could have gone my way. Um, that can be tough to get over, but used as motivation. I, I feel I feel I've played really well after those scenarios. So wasn't picked for the six man team during the European Am, and shot nine under the next day. Um, and you know, Lytham um, was around the Euro Nations team that wasn't picked for and came fourth mm-hmm. in that. Um, so in one hand, it's annoying because you're playing really well around when those teams are going. You yeah. feel like you can uh, give value to the team. Yeah, but it has been a good motivation tool for me. So I feel like I've played well coming off really bad golf where I just have nothing to lose. And I've, I've played well off being motivated by external factors. Yeah. So I think you have to look at it that way. If you, you can't hold any grudges in sport, like you have to, 
you can you just need to use it as positive fuel use it as fuel yeah, yeah for sure um so again getting your win at the north um it's a big turnaround from like i said you've been nearly in tears after round one to to get in the win <laughs> um <laughs> talk, talk to me about the emotions of that because like the north is a is a tough test mm. like even in the best of weather conditions if, if mm. the conditions turn it can be brutal mm. like, you must have been exhausted by the end of that but like physically and, exo- and mm. uh, emotionally i think emotionally is like it's one of the biggest keys to golf is controlling your emotions and i was yeah i was not in a not in a good state as in, in in my own private life i was probably struggling with things and then um being so invested in a sport like golf which you have to be um you can get over invested and then the emotions take over and that's not a good place to be where it's not a good place to be nearly in tears after the first round of a of a championship um so that was something i needed to to address and i kind of did and i was glad i went to the range that night and then turned around i was like it was it was kind of like a funny moment with my coach was like what's your problem you're swinging great and uh yeah you really need to let go of emotion i think that's what you kind of train on to try and remove emotion that's why you try and stick to the process and do your uh stay disciplined um but as a human being the emotions just that's you're fighting that all the time so um i was fairly wrecked i i celebrated fairly well at the north i wouldn't be like a big drinker or anything i wouldn't really be able for it but yeah I uh, haven't gone through those two or three weeks of poor stuff. I like, I was, yeah, I was wrecked, but we, uh, we were out that night and then Limerick played Kilkenny in the hurling and my family's from Limerick. So I went to that and um, won that, which was a great, another couple of days. And by the time we went to the so, South. So it was three wins really. In it the, was a in few the wins. Weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we went down to, um, down to La Hinch, which is a, a great place, but I stayed off it. Then I was, I was back disciplined and, uh, but by that, but after the South, I had lost about six kilos. I'd say, as pictures of me now, where I'm fairly, uh, I'm fairly, either dehydrated or just lost, burnt all calories wow. and mentally and stuff. I I lost a good bit away for ten days. So I was I was down to like seventy eight kilos, I think, by the, by the end of that. So, that was either down to drinking or the golf or whatever, both. <laughs> um, how how different an experience is the South to the North? I mean, obviously, to like, the South, like you hear a lot of stories about family and friends traveling down to the hinge for the mm. south and it's kind of like a nearly a festivals type of atmosphere where it's really good support um how different is that as an environment to the north then yeah um i feel like the north with port rush uh the town can be the same and i'd say it probably is for the guys in ulster I, like yeah. the old version of the north where 300 people played yeah i'd say it was fairly similar for the guys from up there uh, and then the south is just that for the guys from from the republic or from yeah. down there so um but it's a really great mixture the the port rush is probably my favorite course in the world i would say and an unbelievable test of golf so that was amazing playing stroke play on that i, I probably would prefer playing stroke play there than match play and then you go to the south and it just has like a different feeling yeah it's a longer week and the, it's you're right in the town and the people are brilliant and so invested in the tournament um that it is different it's it's probably more enjoyable on a social side of things and match play there is just like i feel like it's more enjoyable playing match play on that course than stroke yeah, play yeah so um i think it's like a really great two weeks it's pretty now that the north has moved um it's a really great couple of weeks and it's like very different uh, yeah it's really good so then that year when you did go back to back you you won the two to two events in a row. Was your confidence then sky high after the North, or was there a case of like emotionally you're still like ups, upset at what happened at round one, or or was it a case of you very quickly just parked what happened and were mm. everything's great now? Yeah, well that's the thing. Like that's what was, I'm saying with the with the emotions is that then you get taken away with the highs of it. Yeah. Uh, so I was just taken away with the highs of it then. Um, uh which it might be better to stay level but you know you don't get wins very often so you I really enjoyed it all right and you enjoy then the you know the guys know that you've you, you get congratulations and stuff but um i think with you know help my coach who's, who's quite a disciplined character and and um 
bit of like a football manager kind of an enforcer he's like right you're going down there like not to strut around and be oh yeah i won the north last week yeah. and get knocked out so I, I, I was i was very determined that week i was, I was yeah i was really happy with how i treated the south um i stayed by myself with um sean mccown who's a member at road dublin and um i stayed in his house and he looked after me well and i kind of kept away from any pubs and stuff and uh and enjoying the the south so uh, and my goal, I remember that week, was to stay there as long as I can. And I was really yeah, determined to do that. Um, again, you're kind of looking back on, I've gone through like three weeks, which is not that long, of bad golf. Now I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to be really as disciplined as I can. So uh, I started eating better then, not drinking and uh, sleeping well. And, and just fought really hard and had a great caddy for the week in the south, um, Marcus Nolan. And... Uh, just really enjoyed it, but I was really determined to stay there for as long as I could. So then obviously you did get the win. Did you get a chance to celebrate that? Obviously you were saying yeah. you'd lost a load of weight, but that was shocking, did, did you just continue it? <laughs> yeah, that was, it on? that was not my fault. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Southwest, I guess like my, again, I have like family down there. So, uh, and great friends. So I was like the, I remember the Wallaces, the Flemings and, um, they all seemed to buy champagne after it. Uh, and it was nice that they were there. My mom was there, my sister, um, a couple of my mates came down. So yeah, we were up in the clubhouse and against great crack that clubhouse. And, and so we, we had lots of champagne and then there was, uh, the, yeah, Marcus Nolan and Bobby Fleming who were, uh, houses there and Marcus caddy for me. They, they, um, yeah, they polluted me that night. Uh, we went to the, the Charlemont, is it? Is that the... Oh, yeah. I think yeah. the Charlemont. I'd never been in all my years playing the South. Like, the, all the stories are... Yeah, I was there till four in the morning, then I had a 6.30 tea time in the first round of match play and oh. blah, blah, blah. So I went to see what that was like. And the next day I was shocking, really, really bad. So uh, I just... I'm not a good drinker, so I can't can't stomach it. So it's I'm better off. But really enjoyed that, yeah. And... Um, and and was lost lost a bit of weight but i think we thought the irish close was was soon enough after that and yeah and, uh maybe home internationals and then the irish close and um so i had a good time all right yeah it was good playing good golf uh and so we were talking about before kind of when you're when you're in that state of playing good golf everything kind of just becomes very natural you probably have maybe one thought maybe one or two how enjoyable is it to be in that state where you're like, mm. okay, you, you saw what was going on three weeks ago or you had three weeks of, of poor results, turned it around at the north, backed it up with the south and then had another uh, few good results between home internationals to close and, and the the rest. Like, obviously you've got a lot going on kind of on, on course and off course. But is there a comfort in knowing that when you step out into the golf course now at this point in your life, it's almost like a like a security blanket where you're like, right, I'm playing really well here. Mm. I'm doing everything right. Is is that must be a lovely feeling. Yeah, I think yeah, you probably do have I don't know what my swing thoughts would have been at that time, but would have been probably one at yeah. most. Um and then when you're on the green everything just seems so much simpler, you know? And uh it's always been like that. And I think it's like that for my mates who are a twenty handicap or or what you just sometimes you just step on the course and you just feel comfortable and you're happy and um and I still made I still made plenty of mistakes and and made loads of mistakes in the in the close then I remember first round three or four over but your mindset's different your perspective's different you're not like I shot yeah three over first round of the close versus three over first round of the north it's the same score one day i'm nearly in tears and one day i'm like right i can work on this so it's different cheese yeah it's different cheese yeah yeah so it's um you just get into a positive feedback loop i think that's what i had in australia there recently at the start of the trip every bad shot i had matt fitzsimons caddying for me he's from our glass and he's uh, living over there and i had some wild shots but like there was that really like are in my head and i'm like matt what did i do there do, do something differently there and blah 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 you're just getting a real negative feedback loop. And then all you can think about is the bad shots. And then all you can think about is avoiding the bad shots where eventually I turned around and I said, right today, I was like, I told Matt, I'm not going to talk about any bad shots. Every good shot. I'm going to say that was amazing. And that was interesting. That really like switched the, the cycle turned around and, and I felt better then. Um, and you feel more comfortable on the course. So I think when you're playing well, you just have that positive, you only feed that positive 
wolf as that old story goes that you only feed that positive side and you just deal with things better i don't think everything goes your way you just deal with things better that don't what what's your ambition then for for this season like it's it's actually an incredibly busy year for mm. for amateur golf in ireland um, without even looking, I imagine you're probably going to go look at the, the Mid Am and, and the Western Am over in the States again. Um, what what's what events are you kind of are you really looking forward to? I mean, the Amateur Championship up in mm. Bally Leffen has, yeah. has to be up there. Yeah, yeah, that's that's brilliant. Bally Leffen, that's going to be brilliant. I hope, and I think it will, because Donegal is a is a proud sporting place, and I think that's going to get a big crowd, yeah. and hopefully we can get Irish players playing well. I'm sure. I think the last last year's British Am we had like fifteen Irish, um, so um, which is an achievement in itself. So if we can get that again, um, I know a lot of lads have turned pro. So um, I love by living. I won the Scratch Cup there on the Glashidi, and we played the Home Nationals on the other course. So I know it well. Um, that's that's a big one, all right. That'll be fun. Um, I think it really kicks off from. Uh, yeah, you've got the Euro Nations if you play it, and then you've got myself and Matt are playing Seminole, which would be pretty cool playing in an old man's mid am event. Um, but again, you can't really pass up that opportunity to play Seminole. So what age are you? I'm 26. You, yeah, so like yeah, they, but they, they brought the mid am age 25 down. Yeah, yeah. in so, America it's always 25. Yeah. yeah, they're bringing it down here. Yeah, as well. Um, so and mid am like that's short for like sort of middle age. It's not like mid handicapped. Yeah, no, yeah, I think Which it's just, I think it's I think. middle age. Yeah, I don't know. I've never I've never looked into it. That's tough for a man who's thirty one to hear twenty five is yeah, middle age. Twenty five, yeah, I don't know. But we just when we saw that in America and, and the prizes that come with it, we were like, We'll go for that. Um So I wanted to get onto that. Yeah. Like it's it's it is a trip that not many people make is to go play the mm, mid am. Yeah. How did that come on your radar? Because obviously it's it's a like you know what's on offer. That's you know the spot in the Masters, spot in the US Open, spot yeah. in the the PGA. Like, is that just how you you heard about it? You know that this there was these rewards, and you're like, let's try our hand at it. Yeah, the first, I've I've always seen. I guess Stuart Hagstad was the first time I noticed it. And yeah. that was when I was like 22, 23 and he was playing the Masters and mm. making cuts. I was like, this guy is brilliant. And yeah. then you see, well, he got in because he won the Mid Am. And then I think he was like top five in the world um, as well. So he was getting into the US Open and other things. And uh, yeah, I remember we were in St. Andrews playing. We were in the practice round at Chipping Green. And I think it was Mark Boucher that said it. Um, and maybe TJ Ford was there and Matt okay. McLean. Uh, so we were all 25-ish. Matt's about 45. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we were... Uh, <laughs> We were... Matt's um, catching a lot of yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this episode. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. I can't wait to send it to him. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so I think it was I think it was Boucher, yeah. said, you know, I think you get you can get straight in. You don't have to qualify. Because that's the thing with the US Am as well. That you mostly have to go qualify unless you're top 50 in the world. So I think you were, the mid-am was like top 450, 500 in the okay. world. And, and so we were in inside that. So myself and Matt like just went for it. Mm. Um and committed to it and had a great time yeah uh yeah because yeah. you you guys were you were traveled over together obviously mm. living together and then just progressively just went up the the tournament were you on opposite sides of the of the yeah. bracket yeah yeah opposite sides yeah which is it was obviously good yeah to the the point but yeah when you come home then each day and you're like yeah no listen you did great i did great and yeah we'll, we'll see how, how long it keeps going on at the back of your mind is the idea of we could see each other in the finals come into yeah into, into mind. Um, we went over, yeah. So I beat him in the stroke play, and and people should always remember that. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was, I think he did he did really well. To he ended up in like eighth or something in the stroke play, yeah. um, having been like five over through six or something mad, but. Um, Pretty early we saw we were on opposite sides of the draw and we were just kind of joking, um, see in the final. And then once it got to, I think he won a good match, quarterfinal or last 16 that went down to the 20th hole. Mm. And I remember when he won that, thinking that, didn't really piece it together. I was like, there's a great chance because he, he was on, I think Stuart Hagstead and this lad James Lowe, who won the qualifier, um, were on his side of the draw, but they were, I think James Lowe got beaten. 
and then it was looking like he could play Hagestad, um, and then Hagestad got beaten. So he was uh, he was looking like, yeah, about the quarterfinals, we were like, this yeah. is a great chance of. There was a lane opening up for him. Yeah, and then, and then, and then it came. Yeah, we were kind of like, and we were playing behind each other, or in front of each other. So mm. we were kind of celebrating and pushing each other on. So like, I was there. There's a picture, a funny picture of uh, of us kind of like, yeah, fist bumping or shaking hands or something after we won our quarters and our semis, and then and then we had the the final, which was strange because of weather delays. We had to play the first round in the afternoon, and then we had to sleep on it, and then we had to go out and play again in the morning. So, firstly, going into the you know you make both make three semi finals. And you know you have to play each other. You travel all the way. You're staying together. Uh, how long a, a break was there between the same finals and finals? Um, not long. I think well, maybe I didn't wait for him to finish the semis. I might have gone in to start eating. Um, right. And I might have seen it. was probably like an hour and 20 minutes, okay. hour and 15 minutes. So then having to sleep on, you know, after the the first first eighteen holes was a thirty six hole. Yeah, thirty six hole finals. We played final. eighteen. He was uh, two up through eighteen. What's that night like? Because I imagine every other night up to that point has been like, yeah, yeah, pushing each other on, having a crack. Yeah. And whereas now you're like, okay, now we're really just it's just the two of us. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. More, it's, it must be a different environment going home to that. It's a it's a it's slightly odd. Um, it's slightly odd, like playing each other, because it's it's a funny sport, like it's a gentleman's sport, but you're trying to beat each other. Um, There's also the added, like you're the only two Irish lads over there, so you went yeah. over there together, like probably everyone saw you together as like the two Irish lads that came over to yeah. play in this, and then all of a sudden it's like okay, you're now totally on your own because you're against each other. <laughs> yeah, well, they had this narrative that we were like, we were best friends <laughs> for years. I was like, I don't even like Matt that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were, well, me and Matt had started playing like a year or two, um, but that, that trip like was, was, was good. Um, for us, we got, we got, we get on well, like we, we argue nonstop, but it's kind of good crack. Um, if we're in a four, yeah, if we're in a four, but the other two are always giving out that they're, we seem like we're fighting, but we're not. We really enjoy just arguing. If I say, like, sky is blue, he's like, well, it's not blue. So all that kind of crack. He just says the opposite to me. But uh, we we did well. Like, uh, yeah, we didn't get on each other's nerves. But going back, it's it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more quiet in the car. And uh, then we went back. It was fine. I remember we had a uh, bowl of Doritos and we watched the Golf Channel. We were on the Golf Channel. Um, and... Uh, then we had dinner. We were staying with my the lad who caddied for me, Dan uh, Benham, and uh, and his wife. So uh, we had some steaks that night, and Matt's girlfriend Kate was there. So we all had dinner together, and again the golf channel came up, and I have a video on my phone of it, and I was slagging him, um, you know, saying I'm going to turn around tomorrow and stuff. So it was a bit of lightheartedness. Then again, you wake up the next morning, it's a bit more serious, then a bit more quiet, um, which is fine. We can remember both we both know what we're um playing for and we just do things how we want to do things and then we played and then we had a bind against us afterwards you know i had needed probably 20 30 minutes to myself to you know get over that um but then it's over and you you kind of that's you know, nothing you can do those, those 20 30 minutes you take yourself are they different to 20 30 minutes you take after the irish amateur or the close or whatever it is is different because of what's on what was on the line in terms yeah. of the potential rewards. Yeah, yeah, I was pretty emotional. Um, just good at I. He played, he played great golf. I think we had plenty of birdies. I, I think we had nineteen birdies between us. Um, so like a lot of time, you get to the final, you're so tired that the the golf can can. Um, Sometimes it's not the best golf. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. So um, I made. I, I remember making too many bogeys, but I I fought back pretty hard at the end. I birdied. 13 14 15 and uh yeah just i i felt like just gutted and went off and again it's just the emotions of sports you know you start thinking about it's over then you know like i really mm. believed i was in that like you said in really confident state for the north south close mm. uh then i went into this i felt really confident i felt i was gonna win um and then you don't and then it dawns on you and then you're by yourself you know um 
you know, you think about your family and stuff. And then I'd be thinking about my dad, um, who, who passed away and, and yeah, so it was tough. Um, but again, you just have to fight hard to not let it swamp you. So I just, I took a minute and was looking over the course and just thinking like, it was an amazing week. Match play is tough like that, that so there's one winner at the end of the day and the guy who gets come second has had a pretty monumental journey to come second, but, um, so it's a bit emotional, but then you just that sport. There's nothing you can do. You can't you can't like look back and say, "Well, can I change this or change that?" It's it's done. So you have to take your hats off to to Matt and stuff. So, but you need that time to just digest it and uh, to not be bothered by anyone, so that you don't uh, hit a journalist a a punch <laughs> for saying the wrong thing. You know, because yeah they were like that you know you're like what's it like losing to your best friend and blah 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 and you're like man i don't want to you know you don't want to answer those questions straight away yeah well so do you have one more us mid am in you yeah i think so i mean i'm I'm planning to go to q school at the end of the year again try and um try and get through it but um so it kind of clashes in september which is kind of first stage time of year um but i don't know it's a great event it's a great opportunity for a full-time golfer um, who's still a young mid am to to give it a rip. Um you know, last year I was I was a bit disappointed that I got beaten by a guy who was six under for thirteen or fourteen L. So um that's how match play can work. But yeah, if I have a good year I'm I'm I probably will give it a go. You know, the, the opportunities to play the Masters in the US Am is, or US Open is it's a great opportunity for, for a full time golfer. I mean, you know, otherwise you'd be what, top fifty or sixty in the world as a pro. Mm. So no, I think it's. Uh, I think I probably will give it a go. So you spoke there about being a full time golfer. There's a lot of uh, a lot of supports that kind of come into play with that. It's a, it's a full time job to be basically a full time hmm. amateur now. Um, how, how big an undertaking is that? Yeah, it's um, you know people talk about it, it like it can be. I guess a little unfair, you know, if you go to the the West and some of the championships, and there's only like ten or fifteen lads who are like that, and a lot of the time one of those guys wins and I understand that that can be unfair for guys who are working full time and just play on the weekends and they're playing a really high standard. Um, guys who are playing in the West and are still working full time are not just playing on the weekends though. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, there's like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of evenings and yeah. days off, but um, yeah. So, but, but at the same time we, you know, we have to use that to propel ourselves to try and play in the big events mm. and um yeah, so it's a big advantage for me and like I have a couple of sponsors now that you're allowed as an amateur to to have. So that was last year was uh, Unifar and Camaral, which is PJ Catalonia. Sorry. PJ Catalonia uh, it's changed to Camaral now and um so that was a big help because obviously you're paying like it's a massive expense and the Walker Cup year was a was a big year, you know, went to America and South Africa and everywhere. So um yeah it's it's you couldn't do it without the backing of of those guys and ireland's a great place for philanthropy and and help and people want to help you and try and push irish sport um mm. so i yeah i couldn't really do it i couldn't really justify doing it without without them so um that is a big help and then yeah there's lots of cool perks that come along with it you know being into golf and you get you know i wear link soul gear that's you know american gear from the ashworth and and Machinella and um trying out those g4 shoes there recently they're brilliant i i recommend yeah <laughs> yeah do you guys get uh, a bit of g4 stuff yeah, or, yeah, yeah the, really? the guys from g4 are very good to us Salzy callaway support us as well but g4 okay yeah just, yeah they in touch with us recently the shoes are yeah the shoes are lovely they're already really good they're unreal they're i really wore them good. for the first time last week in, in the spanish am and i was thinking i was gonna get blisters and stuff but yeah. it was really really good um so yeah just kind of getting helped along without that you're talking about but no one does it alone expenses. like yeah. and no one can do it alone as, as much as golf is an individual sport like especially from irish amateur stuff there's so much team golf and there's so much club team golf like the, the sport like no one plays it alone even if mm. you're you know you're you're the yeah. one hitting the shots like you hear so many professional golfers now talk about we hit this or we hit that mm -hmm. because they're the caddies part of the team and whoever yeah. else part of the team and like yeah, you just can't. You can't. You can't do that alone. 
moving on to what the first event of this year They're looking ahead to the west of ireland mm. it's obviously the first first major championship of the year easter week um how's preparation going toward that i mean obviously we're a couple of weeks out from that mm. but that must be the next thing on your calendar yes yeah. um yeah it's gonna be good i think yeah, i was sitting down last night with with jeff uh my coach and uh figuring out what we're gonna do for that and um yeah, actually i got a um present there in the post from the west from the club captain and um is that allowed to they be sending yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh so the 100th centenary of the tournament was last year okay um so they've made a massive book um so Lovely. for any golf historians yeah it's pretty cool it's got all the results from the 100 wests as as far back like um, some amount of work must have gone into it mm. um and so that's pretty cool like they really put in a lot of effort the the members and the yeah the 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 core staff and everything that and they're getting the irish am there as well they love hosting events which is great yeah. um and it's a big proper golf course you know you're not yeah. playing like a short fiddly course um so i think it's it's, it's gonna be a great test so preparation is gonna be good i'm gonna play the probably the base down scratch cup and try and play loads of links golf and um yeah keep working on everything and hopefully have a good run at because easter is a little bit earlier this year and obviously the west is uh on that easter weekend how big of a how much tougher of a challenge is it with like the weather at the west mm. can just be biblical mm. like are you are how much are you playing the course or just playing the conditions um i think you're always playing the condition yeah i think it's um really used to it you know it's probably going to be my eighth west i would say and it always throws something at you even when we had it in September that time, you know, there was some serious rain. Mm. Um, it's always going to throw something at you. So I think you're, you know, it's, it's a big driver's course and lots of long putting on big greens. So um, that's what you have to be ready for. And you have to play the conditions, yeah, in the West. If you, if you don't, if you go with your simulator or track man golf, then you're <laughs> going to be in trouble. So um you have to get that old man swing the little little low draw going now that, um, you're, now that you're old at 26 yeah yeah <laughs> i can barely get it up to parallel yeah <laughs> so uh yeah we'll see hopefully loads of wind it's great i guess to finish off have you had a chance to reflect on what you would like to achieve then this year have you have you just sat down with yourself as so what i don't want to say what would be a successful year but what's the ambitions um so I guess what I've learned from last year is last year my goal was Walker Cup and turn pro and um, all I was thinking about was results to get me on the Walker Cup rather than improving every week mm. and so this year it's not really going to be about results obviously I'd like to, I'd love to win away from home I'd love to win a, an Irish championship that's kind of standard so I think you set that up as your as your marker um but you kind of work the main goal is just to not get sidetracked on results and to get uh to get working on how i can get better because at the end of the day i need to need to get better to make make a living from playing golf um you know your amateur career is a good highlight i think of what you're able for what you're capable of sure can you can you take on pros so i need to improve so what do i need to improve and that is you know x y and z and uh hopefully with that comes some good results and some wins what motivates you then um what motivates me that's a good question i think i don't know like a little bit obsessed with getting with getting better i think golf gives you that challenge um just very competitive and then um my dad was just like a massive sports uh lover fanatic golf fanatic and motivates me is just getting to realize how good i can be and i don't know what that is yet so i'm hoping to push for for that well i'm looking forward to to watching and, and finding out how good you can be as well right. thanks very much for coming on cheers johnny on the tee jack nicholas this is the minute the millions around the world have waited for we will allow you to enjoy all of this. They are dancing in the pubs of Dublin. 
Harrington with an ace. And we have a shining star at sunset. Rory continues his run to greatness. The return to glory.